Hi, here's a lesson on introduction to rational numbers. A rational number is one that can be expressed as the quotient of two integers where the denominator is not zero. So for example, we can have 1 over 4, negative 2 over 5, 3 and 2 sevenths is an improper, or sorry, is a mixed number which can be rewritten as an improper fraction as 23 sevenths, 2 over negative 5, negative 2 and 1 third, Okay, so there are many, many different examples of rational numbers, and the list can go on and on and on. Here are a handful that are rational numbers. It's just a quotient, or basically a setup of a fraction of two integers, making sure that the denominator is not zero. Okay, um, when we deal with addition and subtraction of rational numbers, uh, we still follow the rules of order of operations, so the rules of bed mass. So do any brackets first, then do any exponents if there are any, um, division and multiplication in the order they appear, and then any addition and subtraction in the order they appear. Okay. Now, when it comes down to addition and subtraction, uh, and if you're given mixed numbers, you can uh, add together the whole numbers first, if you wish, um, and then remember that to add fractions with unlike denominators. You need a common denominator before you can actually add them. Uh, that is all well and good. However, I find it a little, even though it's a little bit more work, I find it a little bit more straightforward just to put everything into improper fractions so then you're never guessing as to when you can use improper fractions um, or when or when you have to use them, or when you can use mixed numbers. So I just like to change everything to improper fractions and then just plow through the work. So let's begin. So 5 and 3 quarters, change that to an improper fraction. So we multiply 5 times 4, add 3, so we get 23 over 4. And then 2 times 3 plus 1 gives us 7 over 3. Now we need a common denominator, and by looking at both of these, we see that the common denominator would be 12. So we're going to multiply top and bottom of this by 3. So we get 69 over 12. And we multiply top and bottom of this by 4. So we get 28 over 12. And we add the numerators leave the denominator the same so we get 97 over 12 and then change it back into a mixed number so we get 8 and I believe that's 1 12th if I'm not mistaken yes it is so 8 and 1 12th is the final answer for this Part B, we're changing the mixed number of negative 5 and 2 sevenths into an improper fraction. Now remember, when we change improper, or sorry, mixed numbers to improper fractions that are negative, or sorry, when we change mixed numbers that are negative into improper fractions, forget about the negative at first. Just leave that alone. We're going to multiply 5 times 7, add 2 and then stick the negative back on there when it's all said and done, okay? So 5 times 7 is 35, plus 2 is 37, so we get 37 sevenths negative, okay? Please don't forget the negative sign. Um, and then we do the same thing here, 2 times 14, which is 28, plus 1 is 29, over 14 with the uh, subtraction sign there. Now we get a common denominator. Hopefully it's plain to see that the common denominator there, or the lowest common denominator would be 14. So we'll multiply top and bottom of this by 2, so we get negative 74 over 14 minus 29 over 14. We'll subtract those. So basically, we're because they basically have the same sign, it's negative 74 minus 29, or it can also be seen as negative 74 plus negative 29. Uh, the two signs are the same, so we just add the numbers and leave the same sign together. So we get negative 1 over 3 over 14. And then we change that into an improper, improper fraction, so we get negative 7 and 5 fourteenths.
Okay, moving right along now. Here we have a couple um, fractions here, and we're multiplying. So, in this case, multiplication and in example D for division, for these two cases, for these two operations, it is imperative that you change the improper, sorry, the mixed number to an improper fraction before multiplying. Okay, so this is when you would have to do it, um, but if you're in the habit of changing the mixed numbers to improper fractions for all operations, then there's never any doubt, really, of when to do it. So we'll get negative 3 over 4, and this negative can go anywhere you like. It can go in the top, it can go in the front of the bracket, or the division symbol, or in the denominator. I usually like just putting it out in the front for now, or maybe up top in the numerator, depending on my feeling, I guess. Um, and we'll change this here, 2 times 3 plus 1 gives us 7 over 3. And the other nice thing about multiplying uh, or dividing fractions is you do not need a common denominator. If we got a common denominator, all the numbers would get a lot bigger, and then you'd multiply, and then you just reduce down, and it wouldn't really matter. So just multiply straight across. Don't worry about a common denominator because it's not, it's just going to make your life more complicated here. So I'm going to bring this negative with a 3. So I'm going to go negative 3 times 7, negative 21 over 12, because we're just multiplying straight across there. So we get negative 1 and 9 twelfths, I believe. I'm hoping I'm doing that correct. And then we can simplify this. So we get negative 1 and dividing by 3, 3 quarters. Alright, uh, on to D. We're going to do some division, change the improper or the mixed number to an improper fraction. So 1 times 7 plus 2 is 9 over 7, divided by 5 over negative 9. Remember when you're division, or when you're dividing, sorry, you capsize and multiply, or you can say you multiply by the reciprocals. So 9 over 7 times negative 9 over 5. Again, now we just multiply straight across because we don't need common denominators. So 9 times negative 9 is negative 81. And 7 times 5 is 35. So we get negative. That goes in there twice. And what's that? 11 35ths. If that's correct. And one last example, just do something a little bit trickier. Um, we'll go through the same process again, changing the improper, sorry, the mixed numbers into improper fractions. Dealing with the brackets first, because brackets is first in order of operations with the bed mass. And then we'll deal with the other things as they come. So again, forget about the negative sign for now, just change that mixed number to an improper fraction. So we get 4 over 3. Now stick on the negative there. And then here we got 3 times 9 is 27, plus 2 is 29 over 9. That's still in brackets. We're dividing by 7 over negative 18. We can change this around eventually because we're going to do the uh, brackets first anyways. So we see here that the common denominator would be 9, so I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 3. So we get negative 12 over 9 plus 29 over 9. And now, because we're not really doing anything with this division just yet, let's just switch it right now. So I'm going to multiply by negative 18 over 7. Notice that the negative sign does not change. The only thing that changes, so like this fraction does not change to a positive, the only thing that changes is it becomes the reciprocal. So it just flips upside down, and the negative just stays where it is. And now we'll just add this together. So negative 12 plus 29, I believe, would be positive 17 over 9. And then we're going to multiply by uh, negative 18 over 7. I don't really know my 17 or 18 times tables that well. So I'll do a little 17 times 18, negative 3, 0, 6 over 63. And then we have to change this into a mixed number. So we got a negative 4. 
and then we're going to multiply so a negative 4 and 54 60 thirds and I believe, if not mistaken, 9 goes into both of those so negative 4 and 6 sevenths would be the final answer. Okay, so there are five examples. Hopefully you could follow along easily. If not, please go back and, and watch the portion of this video uh, that um, could pro provide a little bit more assistance to you. Uh, when you're finished with that, maybe work on a couple of these. So let's do four of them. You know, let's do 5D, 7A from page 29, uh, two C and D from pages 53 to 55. So do those numbers tonight, those questions tonight, and then when you come to school tomorrow, just do the rest of the questions in class. Okay, well thanks for watching, and we'll see you in class.